Hi, my name is Matsuri and welcome back to my channel where I review, rant and discuss about shows or movies that I've recently seen. And today's rant is on Chakshin Adi The Final or One Miss Call 3. So we're in the final movie of the trilogy! Woo! Finally! Now this one is unlike the first one which was good and unlike the second one which was bad, this one was just boring like you can definitely tell it's a cash grab because they're using i mean i think they do that for any movie at anyway but like they they use like the upcoming like actor actors and actresses of the time and in this one they use meisa kuroki and maki hirokita don't get me wrong the, these two ladies are really good at acting like they're probably the one of the best things about this movie it's just that because this movie is so boring, like the talent is just, it's such a waste. <laughs> now, like always, this one is a rant and not a review, so I will be going into spoilers in my thoughts section later. But as I was writing the synopsis of this movie, I realized I couldn't really like cut down anything or make it shorter. So this is going to be like a really, really long synopsis. So I hope you're ready for this. But for those who haven't seen it or are thinking of seeing it, here's the rundown of the story. Our story begins with Asuka watching one chicken get bullied by other chickens. She picks up the bullied chicken and we see flashbacks of her being bullied by a classmate. Asuka turns around to see a girl hanging in the courtyard. And as she approaches the girl, we hear the infamous ringtone. When Asuka looks at the phone, we see on the screen it says, If you don't forward this, you will die. We cut to a group of kids heading to South Korea on a school excursion. We see our other main character, Emily, on this boat, and with a small group, start telling ghost stories in one of the cabins, when we hear this infamous ringtone once again. We find the phone belongs to a girl named Azusa, and once we hear her dying message, we see a picture of her death, which looks exactly the way a girl named Pamu died. When we check the messages, they notice that it is from Azusa herself. Although a little freaked out, they all decided to leave it as a prank and go on their trip. In South Korea, the class is told to take photos with their mobile phones they got from the teachers. And here we meet Emily's boyfriend, Jingwoo, a hearing impaired man who teaches Korean sign language to kids. As the kids go around taking photos and doing their activity, they notice Azusa is missing, and we cut to Azusa roaming around the streets where she says her dying words. Then she turns around to see something and then is dragged by her neck until she is hung. Once she stops moving, a red candy falls from her mouth, and we see that Asuka is watching Azusa die on her computer screen while talking to someone named Pamu. She hovers her mouse over the class picture, looking as if she's choosing who to kill next. When the class is back together again this time, Takuya gets the phone call and the message, if you don't forward this, you'll die. He tries to forward it to a nearby ad, but the letters he types mysteriously disappear. Annoyed with his phone, Takuya goes to the bathroom to get another call. This time it's a video of him walking out of the bathroom. So he does the same thing. We then see a nearby electrical cord breaking and he gets electrocuted. And we once again see a red candy drop from the mouth. And we see the class photo on Asuka's computer, more Fakuya's picture. The class starts speculating that this is a curse by Pamu, the girl that hung herself due to being bullied. But how can it be Pamu when she isn't dead? Could this really be Pamu's curse? And how will the class break free from it? So this movie was trying to use what was like in at that time and so obviously one of them is the cursed chain mail which do you guys remember those like you know the whole like you have to send this off to like 10 friends or something bad is going to happen to you kind of thing like in Japan when you're texting instead of like actually texting each other they do emails with each other like not like gmail or like yahoo or whatnot it's like messaging within the phone or like the phone company so you know if you have a soft bank or if you have like 
a Vodafone, it'll be like, you know, whatever your thing is at Vodafone.com kind of thing. And that's how they will message each other. So that's what well, that's one of the things that I found when I was in Japan. That there wasn't any like phone texting, it was all emails. And the other thing that was popular, which it still is, but pretty much the power of the internet. So like I said, this isn't as bad as the second one. And it's not as confusing as the first one, but it's just really boring. It's just one of those movies that it is definitely for teenagers, like those teen screens kind of thing. Teen screens? Teen screens. Teen screens. And like I said, it's not as bad as the first one where the, like, the ending didn't make sense like it does. I just didn't like it. <laughs> But there are a few points that I want to rant about. So like in my second rant, I haven't done in points. So here they are. So number one, you can't forward a call. I feel like you could probably tell from my synopsis. Like I said, they're trying to do this whole chain mail, like you have to forward it kind of cursed thing. But it doesn't work when it's a phone call. Like unless they made that ringtone into the message tone, that would have made more sense. But they all get a phone call. Like they can hear they they all get the message that they're gonna die and everything. And then they get the message to forward it. I mean, only like the first two deaths are like that. Everyone else is just pretty much just forward the email kind of thing. Now I'm no phone expert or tech expert at all but the screen that they show when they check her phone to see who called her I guess is definitely the message like I said I feel like they're trying to make it like it's a message that you can forward like you need to forward on but you get it as a call like do you see how weird that is like I don't think they understood technology back then <laughs> Number two, they do what they do with all franchises, which is let's not have one or two good deaths. Let's just have a lot of bad deaths. And I'm looking at you, the Saw series. This is something that I really hate when like franchises do this, when like the first movie was really good because it had like a few certain death scenes that were like really, really like really really good and then as the movie series goes on it just starts becoming let's just kill them off as gruesome as we can because that's what people love and that's not why i fell in love with the series right it's it's only because the death scenes are so memorable that that's all people like will talk about that's like oh that's the scariest thing and so you know the big producers out there will be like that's what people want let's give them more and it's like that's not what we want we, we need a good story and good kill scenes not just random one like because in this movie it just becomes like a battle royale like if you've seen that movie like it's all kids just trying to like look out for themselves you know and so you just see kids just like trapping other kids into the closet so they don't forward the phone call or you know you'll just have kids like chasing after each other so that they don't forward the call you just have a lot of arguing like there's not a lot of death in this one it's pretty much the same as the first two or the second one didn't really have a lot either but the first one so like five four or five deaths but it just seemed really unnecessary for some of them. It just seemed like they just wanted to like kill off a lot of people, which isn't what we want. <laughs> we want spooky deaths, not random gross deaths. Number three, did I say kids? I mean, <laughs> if you look at the cast, I, I swear pretty much all of them are probably over 20. Like, even the main two girls, I mean, Maki could 
potentially be under 20 because she has a baby face but pretty much everyone is over 20 you can you can tell that they're not in high school so it just seemed like a really weird like choice that they made well i guess not choice because they probably couldn't get like all these high schoolers to go to korea but they, they just all look old like i couldn't believe any of them to be high schoolers and this could be because of like me growing up because i remember watching dawson's creek and thinking they look like they're in high school and then i rewatched it recently and i could tell that they're over 20 so they do not look like high school students so it could be that <laughs> like knowing how kids look technically but like like this guy no this guy no none of them are 20. also the other thing is they all suck at acting like none of them are good <laughs> so that's also a downer for this one number four there is no reason for Jiwoo to have a hearing disability. The only reason is probably for like the back plot. Like it would have been so much more interesting if if he got the call. Like what happens if you're you know if you have a hearing disability and you get the call? Like in that in doesn't that sound so much interesting? Like do you still die? Like because you did get the call, but you can't hear it so does that work i mean that sounds so much interesting than what happens in this movie that <laughs> it would be so much more better so number five is the first ending so i like always in the first one and the second one this one also has like a fake ending or the first ending depending on how you want to look at it and this one isn't like confusing or weird as the other two but i'm i thought i might as well just talk about it because i did it for the other two so this one towards the end you find out that pamu is asuka and she's called pamu because of stupid bullying reasons and so for some reason mimiko took over her i wouldn't say body because her body's still in the hospital but i guess her spirit, I don't know, just took over Asuka's appearance in her her room. I'll just say room. So you just see Asuka's appearance, but inside it's meant to be Mimiko, who's pretending to be Pam. So the whole time, you know, it turns out that the one that's, you know, killing everyone isn't Asuka, it's Mimiko, just doing her bidding, I guess. And so since Mimiko is using, and this is somehow, using the internet to kill her classmates, Jiwoo suggests to use the power of the internet to destroy her. And what does that mean? Well, what they do is they end up like asking everyone in Korea, well anyone who's in the internet cafe in Korea emails to Asuka's computer so that they can overload her server now granted it can be done the problem I had with that is is Mimiko really using the internet to kill her classmates because what we see is that she's in front of the computer and there's a picture of you know this her school photo and she's just hovering over the pictures and just clicking on them but she also has a mobile phone. So isn't she still using her phone to kill people? I mean, you know, her phone might be connected to her... Like I said before, like the whole, you know, in Japan they send emails through phones. So her phone could be connected to her email. And so that could be the reason why it overloads. But it just didn't really seem like it didn't seem possible like it didn't really make s sense to me at that point but yeah so pretty much after they try to like send all these emails to Asuka's computer Emily and Asuka get somehow transported to their school and Mimiko is I don't know wanting to jump off the school with Asuka for some reason and you know 
Emily's there to like stop them and be like, no, we're friends, I'll do it, you know, take me instead before they're about to like do the swap over and Emily was gonna die. They succeed into overloading her computer. We see that Mimiko glitches out a little bit and we see Asuka's computer explode. Mimiko sh short circuits? I don't know. It's like this, this part of the power of the internet didn't really make sense to me. But, I mean, again, it could be done, but it just, it just didn't seem like Mimiko was using internet to kill people, but she was still using her phone. So that connection didn't really make sense to me. Number six, the second ending. Well, the real ending. So after Mimiko dies, I guess, Asuka and Emily get transported back to where they were. So Asuka's back in her room and Emily's back, back in the hotel in Korea. And we kind of get this like really nice scene with Emily and Jiho and they hug and they tell each other that he's fine. And then we find out the real reason why he can't hear anymore. And like I said, it's because his girlfriend did get the call and he knew that if he took the call in place of her, then she wouldn't have to die. So he felt guilty and that's why he lost his hearing. But that whole taking calls in place of people, wasn't that Lily's thing? Did, did Mimiko decide to adapt that or maybe Lily also went to Korea? Who knows? So he says goodbye to Emily and as he's leaving, he turns around and we hear the phone call. For some reason he hears it unless he can he feel the vibration. I don't know. Yeah, he takes the call and then he dies. So again, it doesn't really end. <laughs> I guess it's still Mimiko's still out there maybe this time using the power of the internet who knows and then it cuts to Emily and Asuka at the beach because they promised each other they'll go to the beach and it ends there with like a happy music so now we have Lily and Mimiko out there so we're all gonna get the phone call sooner or later So, like I said, this one is a very basic horror movie, uh, like, it's pretty much a normal teen scream kind of movies. If you don't like horror movies, this is probably something that's easy to ease into if you want to have a go. There's like maybe two jump scares, but besides that, it's pretty much everyone just yelling and shouting at the same time. Yeah, so besides the main two and the teachers, everyone else is really bad at acting, so that levels it down a little bit as like a teen horror movie, I guess you can say. Overall, probably can skip it if you are a horror fan. Again, if you're not a horror fan and you want to try horror, go ahead. So yeah, you can just jump into this without really knowing what the other two was because I think if you do, you'll be like me and pretty much confused about what's happening. So I'm not sure what my next rad project will be because I haven't really figured out what I want to do with this rant series. So be sure to subscribe if you want to know when I upload next. You like that transition <laughs> but yes um comment below have you seen it or did my rant make you want to see it if you do have any like j horror suggestions that you want me to review let me know but yes subscribe for more reviews and rants coming soon give me a like if you can and i'll see you in the next one bye